Okay, here I'm going to walk you through some of the problems from the yellow version. Okay, this is the yellow test, okay? And uh, so we're going to walk you through a couple of these problems so that, particularly the ones that I noticed were problematic, okay? Now here, all right? Uh, what we want to do is we want to solve this. We want to isolate the absolute value expression, which means we're going to subtract 5 first, which is going to give us 3 quantity. I mean, absolute x plus 4 is less than 12. Okay, we're going to divide by 3, still maintaining the x plus 4 absolute value, and that's going to be less than 4. And so we know we had an ex uh, a rule that said if the absolute value of x is less than something, it means it's essentially sandwiched in between a and its opposite. Okay, which means x plus 4 is sandwiched in between 4 and its opposite, negative 4. And proceeding with that from there, if we can get back to it, okay. Uh, we can solve from the middle on out, okay, from the middle on out, and we just subtract uh, 4, so that gives us in the middle x, subtracting 4 gives us 0 over here, over here gives us negative 8, which is all the values between negative 8 and 0 non-inclusive, okay? All right, um, you would find similar thing going on in the, the first one over here, divide by negative 2, divide by negative 2, and of course the biggie with dividing by the negative, okay, is the reversal of the sign, okay, and this giving us 8, at which point we we'll proceed with it much the same as we did right there, okay. Uh, this next problem seemed to be a big issue for a lot of people, okay, didn't shouldn't have been, but it was, so let's take a look at it, okay? Uh, we have to understand the definition of absolute value. Absolute value is equal to piecewise defined as either the opposite of x whenever all the x's are less than 0 or the same as x whenever x is greater than 0. So in other words, we're saying get rid of the absolute values if what's inside the absolute value is negative, then you effectively take its opposite, and you've got to read that as opposite. If what's in the absolute values is positive, then the absolute value bars effectively have no impact, okay? So, so that's what we're going to do. So we do this by sampling a value. A value, to, the check in between negative 2 and 5 would be 0, okay? So let's just, uh, uh, for the time being, let's put, put in x equals 0. When we put in x equals 0 into this absolute value expression, we get negative 5. When we have something that we're taking the absolute value of, which is less than 0, then we know the impact, the loss of the absolute value bars, comes at the expense of oppositizing that which is inside. So we account for that in this sense. Okay? Uh, we do the same as zero value, or for that matter, any value between negative 2 and 5 into this, okay, and we will see that this maintains its positive nature. If that which is in the absolute value bars is positive, then the absolute value bars have no effect, and we can just write that effectively dropping the absolute value bars and calling that x plus 2. We clean this up algebraically and get negative x plus 5 plus x plus 2, and we drop, we see we lose the x, and we look at that, and that drops down to 7. So this expression within these range of values for x will always be 7. Next guy, for x greater than 2, we pick a, a greater than negative 2. Again, 0 will suffice there, okay? When, when x is, uh, is uh, excuse me, 0 is not less than negative 2, so we will pick a value that satisfies that, maybe negative 5, okay? Negative 5 minus 5, okay, is negative 10, so we've got a negative on the, inside the absolute value bars, which means the cost of removing the absolute value bars is to oppositize that, okay, namely resulting in this, okay? Um, same value, negative uh, 
negative 5 going in there would again give us, in this case, negative 3, which would still be negative, okay? So uh, if we have underneath the absolute, inside the absolute value, something that is negative, then we have to account for that um, with the opposite to remove the, op the absolute value bar. So we have this now effect, okay? Uh, which now if we simplify, we get negative x plus 5 minus x minus 2, which looks like it's going to be what? Negative uh, 2x plus 3, okay? And finally, for x greater than 5, okay, 12, whatever, 12 minus 5 is 7, that's positive. What's inside the absolute value bars is positive, meaning the absolute value bars have no effect, so they can be removed at no charge, okay, x minus 5. Uh, likewise, we'll find when the value exceeding 5, 12, 7, whatever, is put in here, okay, this maintains its positive nature, which again, if it's positive, then the absolute value bars effectively are not effective, and we can just write that as x plus 2, which if we now combine our like terms, we will find that that is 2x minus 3 for that range of values, okay? Um, and um, this, I would suggest you look at in Desmos, just let y equal the x minus 5 absolute value plus the x plus 2, and see that you don't correlate uh, those conditions which have been stated, okay? And I think that will help you out a lot in understanding that, okay? Uh, I'll terminate it here, come back with another video and solve the rest of the problems.